will be recording. So, all right, everyone. Well, welcome to the CPT information session for the start of 2021, 2022. I cannot believe school is starting this week. It's very exciting. And uh, if you are new to Seattle University, welcome. We are thrilled to have you and excited to hopefully meet you in person <laughs> in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we hope you're excited uh, to be here and for school starting. Uh, my name is Megan Spaulding, and I am um, a career advisor in the Albers Placement Center. The Albers Placement Center is basically the career center for the business school. So we um, serve undergrad and grad students in Albers and help with all things career planning. Um, so you know, trying to figure out what you want to do after graduation, internships, all the things that go along with job and internship searching, um, and then uh, just kind of supporting you even after as an alum in your career journey as well. So um, it's nice to see you all. And I help manage the CPT process. Um, so I will be your main point of contact in career in our office um, for the CPT process. We'll get into all of that here during this. So I also want to let my colleague Dale introduce himself. Um, he's from the International Student Center. So Dale, if you want to unmute. Sure, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dale Watanabe. I'm sir I currently serve as the director of the International Student Center. I'm really glad to recognize a few names here who I've actually <laughs> met in person. So that's very cool to um, see you here. Um, Placement Center is a really great partner with the International Student Center and for international students. And as Megan mentioned, she is our CPT expert <laughs> over there. And um, we have met many times and over the years have really um, ironed out a lot of the kinks, I think, with CPT. So I think you'll find working with the Placement Center a really great um, asset. Especially in the last few months, right, Dale? <laughs> yeah, well, and yes, everything changed under COVID, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great, thanks, Dale. <clears throat> so um, let's just jump into it. Bear with me. Um, as with all things, most all things, uh, immigration and visa-wise, uh, it's complicated, right? As you've all, I'm sure, <laughs> encountered and experienced, and I'm sorry for that. Um, we're going to try to break this down simply. Uh, if you have questions at any point, please put them in the chat or feel free to raise your hand and um, then I can call on you and you can unmute to ask a question. We for sure will have question time at the end, but also if you think of something right when I'm on that topic, feel free to ask your question then. So, um, so let's see if I can, yeah, okay. So we did introductions. We're gonna kind of go over what is CPT? What is this whole thing we're talking about today? And then we'll get into the nitty gritty of figuring out if you're eligible, um, hours and credits and all of that. And then um, spend some time on when you are ready to do CPT, what is the process um, that goes along with that? So I'm glad you all are here today because um, it's really good to know all this ahead of time um, to make it easier on yourself and to make sure you have enough time to do the process when it comes time to do that. So thank you for being proactive and attending this today. Um, <clears throat> I know many of you might just be starting your degree. You're not ready to do an internship yet, but you are thinking about it down the road. Um, if all of this, like, you know, six months from now, you forget all of this, um, you can meet with me at any time. I'll put my information at the end. I will we'll also be recording this so I can um, email it to you. And then um, I also plan to follow up with, ev with everybody attending today with an email with um, the slides from today and then any uh, some helpful documentation that we're going to refer to in this presentation. So, so what is CPT? Um, it's an acronym. It stands for Curricular Practical Training. <clears throat> and it is for an F1 visa student, um, so a person on a student visa, it is one form of temporary work authorization when you're on the F1 visa. Um, there's another form of temporary work authorization, OPT, we'll talk about the difference there. Many of you have probably heard of that one. Um, so this is kind of similar, but <clears throat> it's basically practical training, which usually means an internship, related to your degree. 
and you'll hear that curricular part in there. The idea here is that the internship is part of your program of study. Um, that we, we, we think about the internship as kind of like a class as part of your degree. Um, and so immigration has decided, well, if you're doing work that's counting towards your degree while you're studying here, you should be you know, able to do that on a temporary basis and get paid for it. And so that's why this is available. Um, <clears throat> so it's you know something where you're able to go out of class and get practical, hands-on training related to what you're studying. Um, and then we kind of we wrap that into your degree. So it's part of the curriculum. This is for paid internships. Um, so short term, there's some kind of end date on it. Uh, we've, we've also approved CPT for contract positions, a contract positions where you might work for a company on contract for six months, nine months, something like that. Um, we see that kind of similar to an internship, so we'll prove that. So this is not for long-term full-time positions. That would be more OPT and <clears throat> H-1B visa, things like that. Um, so this is more for a temporary short-term internship while you're doing your degree of study, okay? And so obviously CPT is different than OPT. We'll get into those differences here. So what is an internship? <laughs> Um, this one's a little bit not black. This is not as black and white. Um, it's a little bit tricky. If you've just moved to the U.S. and you're just studying here for the first time, this term might be new or you just might not meet, know what it means for um, the United States. <clears throat> it's kind of vague. It depends on the company. Every company can kind of define what an internship looks like in their organization. But there's, these are some commonalities or things we would be looking for, ideally, <clears throat> for this to kind of um, be a meaningful experience for you. So it's generally paid or unpaid. You actually can do an unpaid internship, or those exist. Um, it can be full-time or part-time, and it's um, ideally professional experience. So what we mean by that is something um, related to your degree um, kind of higher level, you know, if you're a grad student, we're going to be looking that the opportunity is um, set up well for a grad student who has a little more experience and it's not an entry level role. Um, it's something more than just a part time job. So it's not a sales associate or a barista or something like that would be higher level where ideally you're you've got some ownership over some projects. Maybe you have some more responsibility than just a typical part-time job. Ideally, you're working with a team of full-time employees and contributing to the work they're doing. Um, and then obviously getting hands-on experience in a potential area of career interest or something that aligns really well with your degree and what you're studying in classes. Um, and an internship alone for all students can be for credit or not for credit. Not every student that does an internship is getting credit. This is kind of like a, a side thing. Um, but for CPT, you do have to do credit. And, and I'll explain that here in a minute. But generally, when I'm like helping students with this process, these would be the kinds of things we'd be looking for and that a faculty would be looking for to approve um, your experience as an internship. Okay. Um, I don't think I really need to convince you that uh, it's it's a great opportunity to do an internship or do a CPT if you can while you're here. I know you're all like, of course, I want to get work experience. <laughs> um, but if you're kind of on the fence or wondering why you would do this, um, internships are a really great opportunity to enhance your skills, especially related to what you're studying and what you want to pursue after graduation. Um, to get really relevant skills in that area, um, <clears throat> to gain experience working in the U.S. How does the business world work here? How are things done culturally? What are the expectations? Um, you know, and, and maybe um, some possibility of future work experience after graduation and kind of building um, the opening doors for that. Uh, make professional connections, again, to help in the further furthering of your career journey. Also, um, 
you know, just to have references down the road, uh, people who can speak to your work performance. Um, and then obviously make, make some money ideally um, while you're here on your F1 status. Um, we have a question real quick. I just wanna make sure. Okay. So if you are curious about, this is a question a student's asking, they don't, they're not even really sure of their status. So Dale is here from the International Student Center. That would be the first place you would want to go is talk to your International Student Center advisor to find out what your status is, what visa are you on, um, and then and then um, going forward from there. Um, any comments on that, Dale? Safe to say most everybody's on F1 or? Yeah, I, I think the only thing would be maybe there might be some who are thinking of a change of status. Yeah. Um, so if you are on a H visa, which does allow you to study, as long as you are maintaining full time status and you apply for the change to F1 status and it gets approved, we are able to count back to the first term that you were full time. Uh, there is still a requirement that you have to be in status for at least one academic year though so if you're just starting in the fall term really you wouldn't be eligible for cpt until um, summer mm -hmm. at the earliest okay and all of you are assigned an advisor in the international student center based on the last digit of your suid mm -hmm. um, and that's all on the international student center web page it's a really busy time for them because all of you are yes. coming in or doing orientation. <laughs> so just be patient. If you have reached out to your advisor and haven't heard back, stay with them. Um, keep checking. Um, is there anywhere else they can check their status, Dale? Really, the only people who have access to CVIS are um, at the ISC or admissions. Okay. So the best resource would be the um, International <coughs> Student Center. And if you're not sure who your advisor is, um, you can always email me and I, I know who it is. I can always look up your record. <laughs> Dale can help too. Yes. Julianne, I have, see you have your hand up. Do you, have a, do you want to unmute yourself? Yes, hi. Um, I'm an international student from Brazil. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet and you. I was just, <laughs> yeah, thank you. I was just curious, like, if I apply for CPG, can I apply for OPT at the end of the program, or it's yeah. not related? They're not related. I will, uh, that might be my next slide. Stay with me. We'll, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Absolutely. Sorry. You can do both. Yep. So we'll yep. talk about that. Thank you. Good question. Okay. <clears throat> so there's a couple other questions in the chat. I think I'm going to address them. So just stay with me. If I don't, make sure to ask it again. So CPT and internship for credit. Okay, so internship for credit is a process in Albers. Um, I think it exists campus-wide. Everybody can do internship for credit. Um, that's a process in and of itself. It exists on its own. So if it makes sense for a student, any student, domestic or international, can do internship for credit and have their internship count towards um, their degree program. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I help students with that all the time, trying to figure out if it makes sense. Does it, you know, um, help them in their degree? Is it just added work? We figure that out all the time for a number of students. Um, <clears throat> CPT though, with that little curricular part in the title, um, that means that when you're doing a CPT, you have to do credit because we need to make the internship part of your degree, that's that's kind of how we, the Im immigration defines CPT as integral to your degree or your program of study. And so the way we do that is then we have you take internship credit for the internship. So we're, we're making it part of your degree. Does that make sense? So International Student Center and us, we require you to be in credit for that CPT. And we have to show proof of that and enter all that into the system. Um, so you will always be doing internship for credit when you're doing CPT, they go hand in hand for us, okay? <clears throat> so just kind of, as we go through this, there's like a CPT process and an internship for credit process, and you'll do both when you do CPT and I'll help you through both. Now, there were questions about, can I still do an OPT? Yes, they are totally separate from each other um, for the most part, and they're different processes. So um, 
when you're ready, generally most people do OPT after they've graduated. So OPT is optional practical training. That gives you 12 months of work authorization to get paid. Um, so it is temporary again, but it allows you to do like a full-time position after you graduate or you know, a variety of positions and work and get paid for a full year after you graduate from your program. <clears throat> so you could do, you know, two or three CPTs while you're a student, and then you graduate and you could do a full year of OPT. So they're not, they're kind of mutually exclusive. The OPT process goes through the International Student Center. Um, in fact, our office isn't involved in it at all, other than helping coach and prepare students on how to find positions for OPT. But when you're actually like applying for OPT, that whole process is done through Dale's office, the International Student Center. Um, like I said, they're pretty separate. The only time CPT will affect OPT is if you decide to do CPT in your very last quarter, um, you'll really want to talk to me or International Student Center about that because we want to make sure to finalize that CPT before you apply for OPT. Because sometimes um, if you don't do that, it can mess up your OPT process. So easiest thing to do would be don't do a CPT in your last quarter. <laughs> mm -hmm. Try to plan it ahead of time. But sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Just make sure you're in communication and we, we do the two processes in the right order. Um, <clears throat> You, if you're not um, eligible for CPT, um, which is probably not gonna happen as often now, we've made some changes to our policy, but um, you, can, you can actually do OPT while you're in school. It's called pre-OPT. So you can apply and use up some of those 12 months while you're still in your program. Um, it's a much longer application process. It's like three months, so not very many people do it. Um, but you can sometimes use OPT during school. And then if you did full-time work, full-time internship on a CPT for more than one year, it would actually negate your OPT. Um, but I don't think I've ever had, I've never worked with a student who has interned full-time for more than a year. So that doesn't, that's never really been an issue. I would counsel you against that <laughs> so that you could still do your OPT. So it's not really ever been an issue. Um, it's only happened, I think, in the College of Nursing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Because they do so many practicums, right? Oh, Dale, thanks for asking me these. I appreciate answering these in the chat. Okay, good. <clears throat> So that's only, yeah, you can definitely do both CPT and OPT and take advantage, okay? So here's the next big stage is trying to figure out eligibility. And this is a good reason why planning ahead with um, CPT um, is a good idea, just so you make sure that you do it in a way where it, it benefits you and um, you have a lot of um, time and opportunity to take advantage of it. So there's kind of two sides to this. There's Im US immigration requirements for CPT eligibility, and then Albers has some requirements as well. <clears throat> US immigration is pretty broad on their requirements. Um, you have to have had F1 status in the US for at least three quarters full time. Um, so ba basically being on the same CVIS number. So um, if you just moved here and you're just starting study in the States this fall, the first time you'd be able to do a CPT is summer quarter. Next summer, 2022 would be the first time that you could do CPT. You've got to do a full-time fall, full-time winter, full-time spring. <clears throat> if you did undergrad in the States and now you've shifted right away to grad program, you'll be fine. You can do CPT at any point. Um, if you went home between the two and now you're here on a new CVIS number, it's like you're starting over again and you've got to wait till next summer. And then if you're an undergrad student and you've been here full time for um, in the US or at SU for a couple years, you're ready to go with CPT as well. Okay. Um, and then internship must relate to your major or degree. So you, you want to focus on something that makes sense to fit into your program. And CPT is required if the internship is paid um, because you need, this is your work authorization. This says you are able to work and get paid. Um, F1 students, just with your F1 visa alone, you're only allowed to be here to study. There is no work authorization in the US with that F1 visa by itself. 
if you want to work, um, you have to get the CPT or the OPT in order to do that. Okay. So then on the SU Alber side, we have a couple of requirements. So like I mentioned, when you're doing CPT, you have to enroll in credit so that we can make that internship curricular and part of your program, even if you don't need the credit. Okay. So if you um, internship credit in Albers for all the programs counts as elective credit. For undergrads, it counts as general elective credit, which is a section in your degree evaluation, not major elective, so general elective. For grad students, it counts as one of your elective classes. So this is where you kind of want to plan ahead. If you don't want to have to pay for extra credit you don't need, you'll want to plan ahead and save one of your elective classes um, to do CPT. And then it's just, you would have paid for that credit anyway, and it works out and takes the place of one of your classes and you're in good shape. So it's good to plan ahead so you're not having to pay for extra credit. Um, I, has, I have a couple students this year, they've used up their electives, but an internship came through, they're really excited and they wanna do CPT and they've just decided the internship's more important to them and they're gonna go ahead and pay for a credit this fall that they don't need in order to do the CPT, which is great. But just so you know, ahead of time, it'd be nice not to have to do that and to incorporate it into the electives you already need. So um, just be aware of that. Also, while you're doing CPT and the credit, you need to maintain full-time status um, unless you're approved for a vacation quarter. So if you were doing a CPT this fall, you would need to be in at least six credits if you're a grad student and 12 credits if you're an undergrad to, to maintain full-time status. Um, mostly that's never really a problem for people, but it's just good to know you've got to juggle kind of that classwork and internship at the same time. Most students have vacation quarter in the summer. That's a great time to intern because you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about classes. You can work, you know, intern full-time, um, I had a lot of students do full-time internships this summer and not do any classes. And it was nice. They could just totally focus on work. Um, so that's a great time to do CPT. And then your CPT, you have to think about it like your internship is like a class. So obviously class starts on a certain day and ends on a certain day of the quarter, right? CPT is very similar. So your internship kind of has to fall within the dates of the quarter. Um, so let's say you're doing a fall CPT. You could start on Wednesday because that's when fall classes start. And you could intern all the way until the day before winter quarter starts. And that would be your fall CPT. Okay. And so when we're doing the CPT paperwork, we would say start date is this day, end date is has to be before the next quarter starts. I'll help you figure out all those logistics and there is a way to extend internships and things like that, but you wanna think about your internship as a class. And so those, those internship dates need to fall within the quarter, okay? Um, we've got some questions here. I wanna, Dung Luong, if you wanna unmute yourself and ask your question. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, question is like, is it too late now to apply for the CBT for this quarter? Nope. Um, you can add internship credit after the quarter starts. Uh huh. Um, but just it, I'll go into what the process looks like. It can take about two weeks. So it kind of depends on when the company wants you to start. Are they okay waiting for you to get through the CPT process? Um, mm -hmm. If you start late, do you have enough time? to intern, you know, is it enough time for the company, um, depending on when you start in the quarter kind of thing, so. Yeah, and I like, I have two more quarter left. Yeah. Do so you think I can do two more CBT? Probably, yeah. It's hard for me to know. I'd have to dig into like how many credits, you know, do you have any credits left? Are you okay paying for extra credit if you need it? Um, mm -hmm. Do you have an internship opportunity? So Kieran? I'm, I'm sorry, what? Do you have an internship solidified? 
No. Okay. So that's the thing. We don't do any of the CPT process until you've actually like secured and accepted an internship offer. How do I get that? So you can go through our office and see one of our career advisors to help you with the internship application process. Oh, yeah. And I'll, I'll show you our information at the end of this. So um, that's a great, that's a good, that leads me into like, yeah. So prior to all of this, there's this whole process of finding internships, applying to them, interviewing, and then getting the internship offer. Mm -hmm. um, much like all students are kind of, all students are doing that. And all students are also doing that for full-time jobs. And so mm -hmm. our office, um, we help students through that process. Um, this presentation today doesn't cover that, um, but you can make an appointment with um, any advisors in our office to, and have them help you with your resume and how do you find internships and apply to them and go through that whole process. Doug, are you mm -hmm. a grad student or undergrad? I'm undergrad. Undergrad. Okay. So you can go to the Albers Placement Center webpage on Seattle U's website, and there's a there's a button to book an appointment, and we can kind of help you through that process. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Chanin, do you want to unmute and ask your question? Uh, yes. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, yeah, I just have a question because you mentioned earlier that um, um, suggest not to do the CPT right before the OPT. Yeah. So, but you're you're saying that um, some people do it at the summer quarter. Mm -hmm. So does that does that mean it's a, like connected CPT to OPT? No, I'm meaning like if you were here, are you a grad student or undergrad? Grad student. Grad. So some grad programs are over a year, like maybe two years or a year and a half. And when that's the case, some students choose to wait until summer to do their internship. Mm -hmm. If your program is only a year and you're going to graduate in the summer, then you'll, I mean, you can, again, you can do a CPT in your last quarter. You just really want to make sure to get on top of all that early. And we make sure to do the CPT process first, and then you can apply for OPT. Okay. That makes sense. So yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you can okay. do it in your last quarter. It's just a little bit trickier because you're also going to be applying for OPT probably. And yeah. so we just need to make sure to do those in the right order. Understand. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Um, Jenny, SSN is social security number. <laughs> so yeah, you asked that in the chat. So, okay. Everybody good? So, okay. And then the final eligibility for SU Albers is um, if you are doing a full, like, if you're doing a full-time internship, which is um, anywhere between 20 and 40 hours a week is what immigration defines as full-time. So 21 to 40 hours a week. Um, we don't want you in more than two classes at the same time. Um, we just wanna prevent students doing a full-time, really intense, lot of work internship and also carrying a heavy class load of three or more classes. Something's gonna suffer. That's not the goal of this whole thing. Really, the goal is to supplement your program, not to stress you out and have, <laughs> have your program be the detriment of it, right? So, um, and most students I talk to are like, yeah, totally. I don't want to do that. So um, just be mindful that you're planning your classes accordingly based on how many hours you'll be working in your internship. Um, if you're uh, an undergrad, we just want to make sure you're kind of looking at that as well. So this would just be for full-time internships. If you're working up to 20 hours a week, no big deal. You can take as many classes along with that as you want to, but still just be mindful like that you're not biting off too much um, than you can chew and, and you want to make sure you're performing well in both, right? So hours and credits, I don't have a ton on this um, because it kind of depends on the program. Um, we, <clears throat> so things have kind of changed. You, again, you can add on credit to do a CPT that you don't need, um, but ideally you want it to fit into your program, right? So um, most grad classes are three credits. Um, so if you think of, if you have an elective class available for three credits, 
Um, then you can think about um, either doing all three credits at one time for your CPT or spreading those credits out. Um, but just kind of, uh, uh, you can plan that. And so based on how many credits you're doing at a time, there's just a minimum amount of hours that you have to complete at your internship. Um, I think for one credit, it equates to about 10 hours a week that you have to be working. If you're doing um, two or three credits, it equates to about 15 hours a week that you're working. And there's just a minimum hour. There's no maximum. So you can work full time and that's great and that's allowed. We're just looking at your meeting, the minimum amount of hours, similar to like if you were doing a three credit class, you're in a minimum amount of hours in the classroom. It's the same kind of idea, okay? Um, some programs, um, you know, you can use a lot, a lot more credits or it can help you towards um, your program a little bit more. Most, most students in grad programs are doing max three credits again, to count for one elective class. And then in undergrad, most students are doing max five credits because undergrad classes are five credits. So generally, that's what most students are doing. Um, I'll get into this, but you can spread that credit out. Um, that's why it's good to plan ahead. So you can just, you know, meet one of those, one of the classes that you need anyway. And then it's just a minimum amount of hours. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, the process. <laughs> um, this is also good to plan ahead because there are a lot of different parts to this process, okay? So the first process is determine eligibility. Have you met that three consecutive quarters on F1? Um, it might mean talking to your academic advisor to see where you are on credits. Um, can you fit this into your program? When's the right timing for it based on when you're taking certain classes and what your class plan looks like. Um, just all those little like, you know, talking to me and what does, what do you need to be looking for in an internship? What would be approved? All those kinds of things. Um, it's good to do all that up front before you get too far into the process. Um, then you would go about looking for the internship, applying. Again, our office can help you in that process. Um, but then ultimately, hopefully you get an internship offer. And it's at that point that you would start the CPT internship for credit process. Um, <clears throat> so when you get the offer from the employer, you're going to ask them for an offer letter. And these are the elements that need to be in the offer letter. This is also on the International Student Center webpage under current students and CPT OPT. So if you need to, and I'll also, I can send out these slides. Um, some employers have a standard offer letter that they send all um, candidates. And a lot of times some of these elements are not included in that. So you might need to ask your employer to um, edit it for you or just write a supplement document for you. But um, in there, we need your job, job title, your dates of employment, so start and end date, number of hours you'll be working per week, um, where your actual work will take place or where the... I mean, some internships lately have been virtual, so we've just been putting where is the company located. And then a just brief description of your responsibilities, or you can attach your job description. Um, and this is all really, it's ultimately something you will give to your International Student Center advisor. This is important information they have to enter into the CVIS database. Um, so this is crucial information because immigration will see this, and we need to make sure it's all um, in there and complete so that they know your opportunity is legitimate and um, you know uh, got all the kind of all the things outlined that they would be looking for. Okay. Uh, let me go back. So you would get your employer offer letter. You would send that. And this, at this point now, you're getting in touch with me because I'm going to help you now through the CPT process and then the internship for credit process. Um, when you go to book an appointment with the Albers Placement Center online, we have a CPT service option. So you would click on that and then I can get you going on the process. Um, but I would take a copy of the employment offer letter and then help you. Um, we have a jobs and internship database on Seattle U, at Seattle U called Handshake. I don't know if any of you have been on there yet, but 
Um, it's a good place to start looking for internships. And then through that um, system, we have a way for you to request internship for credit um, so that we can get record of it. And um, you fill out this form. And then um, when you do internship for credit, you're assigned a faculty sponsor. So I don't approve your internship for credit. You're actually gonna work with a faculty um, <clears throat> who's kind of in that discipline and you'll send them um, a maybe some reflection papers, you'll do some academic components, and then um, they will approve your credit. You don't go to class with them or anything, you're kind of emailing and in touch that way, but there is a faculty member in Alvers that will oversee your credit. So I'll forward them your request, they'll approve it, and then um, we'll get you registered, and then I will write kind of a CPT letter from the academic side saying, we approve your CPT. Um, so you get hopefully approval from the faculty in the, in the handshake process, okay? That could take one to three days, depending on how busy the faculty is. Um, at that point, we will we'll complete a registration form for you to actually register in the credit. Depending on how busy registrar is, that can take three to five days to get in that credit. And then International Student Center Advisor needs to see you're enrolled in the credit. And then they can, um, basically they write you a new I-20 with your CPT information on it. And that can take three to five days, depending on how busy they are. So I show you this, because that means that, you know, at the CPT process can take anywhere from one to two weeks. So it's really helpful to plan ahead, to communicate that to your employer, um, so, you know, if you got hired today and they wanted you to start next Monday, <laughs> you're probably going to have to have a conversation that you'll need another week, probably, so that we can get this process done. Um, and then, you know, they're not frustrated that, you know, it's taking a while. You can't come in on that start day. So it's really good to be up front. You can blame it on me or at the school if you want to. And you can send them my way if they have questions. I'm happy to be the bad guy. Um, but they need to know that you have a unique visa status and that we've got to go through this process so that you can you can be approved to work. And I'm sorry, I'm just going to jump in real go quick. Ahead, I would just also like to remind you that we can't backdate any start oh, yeah. date in Good. CVIS. So yeah. if you are looking for CPT approval, it's always a good idea to get it done early mm -hmm. because we want to approve it before the requested start date. Yep. And, and I'll usually try to coach you through that. So, you know, if you're kind of talking to the employer and figuring out when you can start, I can help kind of give you a sense of when that would be or when would be the safest time to suggest to them and see if they're okay with you starting at that date. Sometimes employers are great about this, sometimes they're not. So I'm happy to help you navigate that. Um, but they should, they should know. I mean, you, you, you know, they, they want to make sure you're on the up and up. They want to be on the up and up. So you want to make sure you have all the right paperwork and everything to start with them. So it's just and, being really upfront. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I would just add, I know there's been a couple of questions about the SSN or social security oh, number. Thank you, Dale. Thank so you. that's the other thing to think about. If you don't have one yet and you <laughs> find CPT, also keep in mind, you're gonna to have to have the CPT approval in CVIS before you can even apply for that number. Yeah. And the process or the adjudication time for that number can be anywhere from one to four weeks. So just keep that in mind if you also do not have an SSN yet. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, thank you. Our super fast, efficient government. <laughs> um, <laughs> So what, ha what ends up happening, what I've seen a lot of grad students do is try to get like a grad assistantship or a job on campus um, before doing CPT, or if you're an undergrad, try to work on campus because then you would get a social security number through that process and that part would be taken care of. Um, if, or if you've done OPT, maybe you're a grad student and you did OPT after undergrad and you stayed here, you should still have a social security number in good shape. So um, but thank you, Delia. That is something to like think about in this process. CPT takes two weeks, but if you need a social security number, now we're talking at least four to six weeks to do this process for you to be ready to start with the company. Generally, with U.S. companies, you cannot start with them until you have that social security number. That's your tax ID. 
and they need that number so they can take taxes out of your paycheck. So that's what that's for. So the other reason why this takes a little while is this slide is kind of showing all the different people that are involved in this process. And all these people are not only doing CPT. <laughs> we all have way other, many other things we're doing too. So be patient with us. Uh, we are happy to help you, but the more time you can give, the easier it is on you and the easier it is on everybody else. Um, so there's our office, there's potentially your academic advisor if you need some advice on how this fits into your program, the registrar who puts you in the credit, International Student Center who issues you your CPT, the faculty sponsor who needs to approve your internship, and then your employer. Sometimes you're just waiting on your employer to write an offer letter or something. So um, yeah, a lot of people involved and so just making sure to plan ahead is really good. there are a few special circumstances that I've mentioned. Um, so what happens if your internship is kind of longer and it falls outside the dates of the quarter? Maybe they want you for six months or I've had a lot of students who interned this summer and now the company loves them and wants them to stay around this fall. Um, we'll try to plan ahead for this to make sure you don't use up all your credit um, in case it is extended. Um, but that's okay. We can spread out credit. Um, so as long as you're in at least one credit while you're doing the CPT, you're okay. Um, and so if you want to use one elective class, it's three credits. We could spread out that credit. You could intern for three quarters. Or you could do three different internships over those quarters. Um, or I have a student this summer who used two credits or actually used one credit, they're interning in the fall for another credit, and then they wanna save their last credit for something totally new, maybe in the winter or in the spring. Um, so you can strategize this however works best for you. But yeah, we can spread out that credit. You just have to be in a credit every time you're doing a CPT, okay? Um, the other thing that what that means is if you spread out that credit, we've gotta do a CPT process for each quarter then. So students who did a CPT this summer, we did the process for the summer. If they're extending into the fall, right now we're doing, we're doing their fall process for CPT. Um, so that means getting another offer letter, an updated offer letter, enrolling in credit again. So all of that process I just explained to you, we go through that again um, for that next quarter. Um, the good news is it's, it's usually pretty easy. All the stuff set up, it's pretty quick, and you know ahead of time generally. So we have a good amount of time, but just be aware of having to do that process multiple times. Um, so yeah, multiple internships, one long internship. Other options instead of CPT, um, if you don't want to do this or you've used up credit and you don't want to have to pay for additional credit, the only other options for working um, would be to work on campus, and you can work on campus without doing any OPT or CPT. You are allowed to work on campus and have authorization to do that without any additional special authorization. Um, you could do the pre-OPT, like I mentioned, where you use up some of your OPT while you're still in school. There also is unpaid internships. Um, you know, an immigration attorney would tell you no matter what you're doing, whether it's paid or unpaid, you should get work authorization. So you should do CPT or OPT. Um, I know sometimes that can be hard or you may not want to use it up or you don't have it. Um, you can do an unpaid internship. We just kind of suggest that you don't mention that when you apply for H-1B or green card or something like that. Um, the safest thing to do would be do CPT no matter the work you're doing, if it's paid or unpaid. Um, but sometimes that doesn't work out for people. So anything else, Dale, that I've forgotten? Special circumstance wise? No, well, the, the only thing I'd mention about um, pre-OPT or, or, or OPT in general is just yeah. keep in mind, you only have 12 months total per academic level. Right. Um, so if you did decide to do like three months of pre-OPT, then that means for post-completion OPT, you'd only have nine months instead of the, the full 12 months. Right. Um, yep. An advantage though is pre-OPT, you can apply for part-time 
Um, and if you did part-time in the summer, three months, it really is only taking away 1.5 months because <laughs> part-time is only 0.5 yeah. per month. Um, and the last thing about OPT is just keep in mind, you know, Megan's been talking about how long it, the process takes for CPT. <laughs> the process for OPT takes even longer. Worse. Um, yeah, it's it's worse because we have to send it to USCIS for adjudication, and we have seen that process be anywhere from sixty to one hundred and twenty days um, before it's returned. Yeah. So, Chenin, I think you were asking me like about the applying in your last quarter. You know, that's why it's tricky sometimes because we want to make sure you're applying for that OPT as soon as you are able to, because it's taking so long to get it. And you don't want your CPT process to hinder that or to stall that out, right? So again, you can do it. It's just, you wanna be really on top of both as much as possible. So you're not applying late for OPT and taking even longer to get your OPT work hard, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, somebody asked if I plan to travel outside the US in the middle of the three quarters leading up to the summer quarter, would I be eligible to apply for CPT? Yeah, I think so, as long as your status stays correct, right, Dale? I, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I was I'm asking, sorry. The student I, is asking if they travel outside the US. Yes. In the middle of the three quarters. So I'm assuming, let's say, winter break. Oh, yeah, as long as they're still uh, maintaining F1 status. status yeah. yeah. Are, are students okay to leave? Are, are they, is it getting hard to leave the country? <laughs> it's not hard to leave the country. The question I mean, is coming back. Come back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> are you advising um, students to not it, leave during the school year? So it's it's getting, I think, easier um, to yeah. travel. Um, okay. there, there's still some questions, though, about you know the, the Canadian border. So uh, we don't really... right highly encourage traveling once yeah. you're here, but um, it certainly is different than it was a year ago. Good, okay, good. But yeah, as long as you're staying student, you're maintaining your student status, you have not changed your CVIS number or changed your visa situation, um, you are fine to do, yeah, you should be fine to do CPT. Um, and then like Dale mentioned, the other thing we run into a lot is students starting on like an H4, or some kind of H visa, you are not able to do a CPT on an H visa. So you would have to transition to an F1, but we will take into account how long you've been on the H visa to account towards that F1 status for three consecutive quarters. So um, let's say you're starting this fall on H4 and then by the springtime you've transitioned to F1, you should be able to intern um, or do CPT by the summer quarter. So. Good. As long as you've been full time every full quarter. time. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So in conclusion, my biggest messages are plan ahead <laughs> and communicate. Um, this is all is kind of complicated. I get it. Everybody's situation is really unique. So make sure. Um, so just make sure to reach out to me. I can help you figure out the specifics for your situation um, as, as much ahead of time as we can do that so you can plan ahead is good. Um, but do not be afraid to ask questions. I would say it's better to check on all this before you even start applying for internships because um, I would hate for you to apply and get an offer and then have it not work out or you're not eligible for CPT or whatever. So um, uh, just make sure and also like so that you're appropriately communicating to the employer so they know what's going on and, and when you're eligible to work, okay? Any other questions? Um, feel free to raise your hand, put them in the chat. <clears throat> yeah, chime in, go ahead. Hey, um, yeah, you. I was just um, curious because some of the programs that I'm in, um, the Master of Science Accounting Anal Analytic. Yep. And, and then um, mm -hmm. I think they're saying that I have um, the stamps eligible. Oh, is, yes. Is that, is that a, like a three-year thing? So can you kind of explain that a little bit? So 
I, I guess I'll jump into for, Please, that. Dan. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. No, go so, ahead. so with, with the stem extension, that has nothing to do with CPT. No. Um, that's all OPT okay. related. And you still will have to apply for the initial uh, 12 months before you're even STEM eligible. And the only way you could be STEM eligible is if you have an employer that is registered under E-Verify and your supervisor has submitted the um, academic training plan or the I-983. Um, but all of that can't happen until you're um, actually approved for the initial 12 months of OPT. Uh, post-completion OPT. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yang, do you want to go ahead? You have a question? Yeah. Like you, you said earlier that I make an appointment <coughs> with the advisor. Uh -huh. Is that where the career arrangement office is? No, not career engagement office. You want to do the Albers Placement Center. So search for that in the SU website. I can put it, I'll put our website in the chat. Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, and then somebody was asking, what is, Dale, you might know the process of acquiring a social security number? Oh, yeah. So you will need to bring some kind of proof of uh, a need for the SSN, such as employment. So if we're talking about like work on campus, then what you would need to bring is a uh, job offer letter from whatever academic or whatever office has hired you on campus. And then we would also provide a letter for you from the International Student Center. If we're talking about something such as CPT and OPT to get the SSN, that's a lot of acronyms for you right there. Um, you would need to have the endorsement on page two of your form I-20. So either CPT or OPT, it does modify page two of your I-20. So you would be able to bring that as um, proof when you go and apply for the number. Good. And somebody was asking again, are we doing this again, this session? Um, yes, I'll do another one of these. I think it's November 9th. Um, <clears throat> that's strategic because that's the week before you can register for winter classes. So we usually do it again around registration time. So if you're planning to do an internship uh, in the winter quarter, you can, you can be planning for that when you're registering for classes. And then I'll record that. I'm recording this, so we'll we can provide it. And then um, I can provide the slides as well to all of you. Um, I'll send it out in an email. Chenin, your hand's raised again. Do you have another question or did you just forget to take it down? Yeah, sorry, I forgot to take it down. Okay, you're fine. <laughs> Anything else? <clears throat> well, great. You guys have asked great questions today. Thank you um, for contributing all that and being so engaged. Um, here's my information. So feel free to write this down. If you have some follow up questions you didn't want to ask with the whole group. Um, you can uh, definitely email me. Um, I put our, you can check the chat. I put our website in there and over on the right hand side is um, buttons to book an appointment. Either we are open now, so you can either book virtually or in person. And there is a CPT appointment option on both of those. And that's what you would wanna choose. Um, I'm the only one attached to that. So you would meet with me and I can help you um, help answer your questions in your situation. So, yeah. Great. Dale, thanks so much for being here and helping out, as always. <laughs> of course, my pleasure. Happy to be here. You guys are in good hands with the International Student Center, so. Oh, no, no, it's the Placement Center. <laughs> <laughs> and they're doing special drop-in hours, too. So um, yes. check their website uh, for all, all questions, visa, OPT, your status. I am not an expert in that. You'll definitely <laughs> want to talk to them um, and, and, and make sure to get connected with your advisor. So you're our dotted line DSO. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're adopted ISC member. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great. Well, thanks everybody. Have a great day. And we look forward to hopefully meeting you in person in the next couple of weeks. So thanks for attending.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.